Hey guys, uh, we took a little break and we're going to show you some of the tackle we use. Uh, if you decide to come to the Roanoke River, uh, we'll try to simplify this. Some people uh, say they'd like to come fishing down here and they don't really know what to bring or, uh, or what to do. So I'm going to go over a few methods uh, that you can use when you come to the Roanoke River. And uh, the main method we've used today is uh, drifting. So basically you just drift along with your uh, live bait uh, down close to the bottom, just drift along off the bank, trying to stay out of the snags or in the middle of the river. And uh, so one of the things you'll need, uh, this is what we use, an open face rod. You can uh, use a bait cast if you want to. One important thing to use is uh, this braided line here. This is 50 or 70 pound braided line. And this allows you to, when you get hung, you can break this uh, mono or fluorocarbon leader off and you just lose the hook and you don't lose your weight and your swivel. And this is the basic rig, and I think we got a boat coming, so I hope you can hear me. So this is the basic rig here. So this is the basic rig that you'll need. Half to three quarter ounce sinker. Glass bead goes here. This one, this particular rig uh, got tied on really quickly, so it was missing the brass bead. So you want a brass bead here and that protects that, that knot there from this weight bouncing off of it. Uh, some sort of swivel and then fluorocarbon leader. This is fairly short leader. Uh, I like about an 18 to 24 inch leader. Uh, probably no more than 24 inch. And basically this weight is going to be floating just off the bottom and your minnow is going to be swimming here. And I think this is a number two, number two hook, number one, number two hook. We use fairly small hooks because a lot of times your bait's fairly small. And uh, so you don't really need a really large hook. If you have really large bait, you need a larger hook. So that's the basic rig that you need to fish for these uh, stripers here on the Roanoke River. Very simple. That was rigged up too. So basically, uh, you can see my brother behind me. We're fishing out the back of the boat. And we've tied off to a, a tree in front of us. That you can see. And you'll see a lot of folks doing this uh, on the river. You'll just find a snag overhanging somewhere and tie off to it. And you'll basically just cast out behind the boat. And when you're drifting, you'll be drifting uh, off of these snags or even in the middle of the river just drifting along. If you get up too close to the shore, of course, you're going to get hung up. So it's very important to, you're going to be drifting backwards. And uh, so I would be drifting just like I'm sitting. So I would sit in the front of the boat with the trolling motor to move, maneuver right or to the left. And then you'd maneuver around these snags. So basically if you're drifting uh, down the river and uh, you have this rig on, I like about a half ounce. Depends on, it all depends on your weight is the flow rate of the river. So right now I think the river is about 13.9 cubic feet per second that's coming out of the dam. If the river gets up above that, above say 22,000 cubic feet per second, you need an ounce to an ounce and a quarter weight that keeps your bait down on the bottom, near the bottom. So basically, I am going to just drop this weight, give it some slack, you're drifting along, drop it down to the bottom, and uh, I'm going to wind up to just where I barely can feel this weight bouncing on the bottom. If you leave it on the bottom and let it drag out behind the boat, it's going to get hung and you're going to be hung up all day long and changing hooks. So if you will just work the rod as you're, you're fishing along, if you'll, you'll feel the bottom and then just lift the rod tip up. I hope you can see that. I got a glare on here. Just lift the rod tip up. I like to lift it up and then just lower it down until I feel it tick the bottom. And many times as you're lowering the rod back down, you'll get a strike. These strikes can be very subtle. You may just feel it, it just begin to pull very softly uh, to it doubles the rod over. So you'll have to feel for the fish bump the shad or the minnow if you have it. 
and then I like to just start lifting up on the rod till I feel some tension on the fish and I know he's got the hook in his mouth and then I can just set the hook. If you're using a circle hook, of course, you just start winding and the hook will hook him in the side of the mouth. Can't really set the hook with a circle hook, you'll jerk it out of his mouth. So that's one way to, to catch him. The other way is you tie off to the bank, you just cast out, let the baits go to the bottom and you sit with them in the rod holders and wait for the fish to strike it. So both methods work on this river. Uh, I personally like to drift fish. So let's talk about some of the bait. So you'll see you can buy bait here. You can get blueback herring. You can get uh, shad. You can buy some from the local guys that sell them here. I think they run anywhere from eight to twelve dollars a dozen. They're kind of expensive, and or either you can get like bass minnows, large size bass minnows, and that's what we elected to do. We went. I went to the lake yesterday. I couldn't find any any shad, and uh, I think I caught one. And uh, our normal places we find shad, we just hadn't found them this year, so we had to go the second best route, and we had to buy a bait. So. If you can see this bait, this would be a typical good sized bait uh, that you would see. This is just a pond ro roach. You can get these. I think this is a like a standard and this side is kind of like a jumbo uh, minnow. And you're going to need a way to keep your uh, minnows live. See there's a couple. Of well, I lost that one in the boat. There's a couple more minnows. So that's what typically most people would be fishing. Some people fish artificials on the river, uh, and they can be very successful at times. We saw some guys today fishing with a fly, uh, a fly rod, and I saw him catch a few fish, and I saw him throwing some flukes, and those guys caught fish. But typically, you'll catch more fish with live bait. So. I have a small 20 gallon bait tank that I built uh, for this bass boat of mine. I don't have a lot of room in it. And uh, so this is a 20 gallon tank I picked up from, I forgot where I got it from. I think I bought it from a guy. I cut the top off some and I put a wooden top on it. I have this Mr. Bubbles uh, double aerator pump. You need to put air in your uh, in your bait tank. <clears throat> and so on the side it has uh, a pump. It pumps the water through this blue hose here. And this is my filter that filters the water and of course sprays back into the tank. Now this tank will typically keep about 80 shad really well. It'll keep up to about 130, 40 minnows. Okay, minnows are a little bit tougher. So there's a lot of great bait tanks on the market, uh, but they can be expensive. If you come down for a day trip and you don't want to, you don't have one of these bait tanks, I have kept minnows in my live well. I don't really like to because they stopped the live well up. And uh, so you'll need some kind of bait tank to keep minnows in. Uh, unless you want to come to one of the bait shops here locally and just keep them in a five gallon bucket or something. But you need some way to keep your bait live or come and fish artificial bait. So if you put in at the welding boat landing uh, to find these fish, these fish migrate out of the Atlantic Ocean and come up the Roanoke River to spawn every year. If the flows are really high, uh, these fish will push all the way up behind the dam of the Roanoke Rapids Dam. But typically you'll find them from the rapids right at the boat landing for the first five to six miles down the river. I think we've drifted maybe three miles, maybe three and a half miles, portions of the sections we've been drifting this morning. And <clears throat> so you'll come up and you'll look for concentrations of fish. So this morning as we drifted along the bank, we found some, he let the fish get away. We found some concentrations of fish where they were really stacked in the river and most of the time that's where we were getting the bites. Right along here where we're sitting now, uh, this morning about two hours ago, well about two hours ago there was a heavy concentration of fish along here 
and we were, you know, we were picking up doubles and some triples along uh, this this edge here. And typically, uh, I have one rod holder on the on the front of the boat, uh, so we got a fish on back here. So let's help him catch. Let's help him catch this fish right. Here. Decides to go to that side of the boat, huh? Oh yeah, that's a good striker. So, typically if you come to this river and you put in the welding boat landing and you go down the river, uh, the water's plenty of deep for any boat. I've seen some really huge boats in this river. It's not a typical really shallow uh, river. If you go put in the welding boat landing and you go up the river, you have to be extremely careful. Uh, so if you look on the Roanoke Rapids uh, dam release and you see that the flows are like 6,000 cubic feet per second this river is really low if you anywhere above 7,500 on up to 30,000 you're not gonna hit anything with your boat uh, there is one place they call the Big Rock uh, up the river actually I'm looking at it now as I'm talking to you so that's really the only rock sticking up out of the water. And most people know where that is. So uh, I, I'm, I'm down here on my bass boat. Uh, we have another big skiff that we bring uh, sometimes to a buddy of mine home. So we have a lot more room. So don't worry about hitting nothing with your boat. And uh, there is a place here in Roanoke Rapids that you can get bass minnows. Uh, we got bass minnows last night from someone we know that has a minnow farm. Went and pick those up. So, anyway, if you want to make a trip down here, hey, by all means, come down here. We drove about two hours and 15 minutes to get here, and we'll typically come three to five times a season uh, to fish this fishery. Hey, it's a lot of fun. These fish are really strong. They're strong fighters, and uh, they, they're a great catch. Anyway, hey guys, remember, it's a wildlife, and I'll see you on the water.